So why did President Obama decide that the world should not see the picture of a dead Osama bin Laden? He explained his reasons in an interview with CBS. Take a listen. There is no doubt that we killed uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, it is important for us to make sure that gr very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head uh, are not floating around uh, as uh, an incitement to additional violence, as a propaganda tool. Uh, you know, that's not who we are. Propaganda tool or not should the photos have been released. I want to welcome back to the show two voices from the Islamic community. Mona El Tahawi is a columnist. She's joining me from Washington. And Hiba Ahmed is a writer for the blog Muslim Matters. She's in Albuquerque tonight. Welcome to you both. And I just want to uh, start with uh, Hiba. Hiba, you are a devout Muslim, as I think most people can see by your dress tonight. You're wearing a niqab, and I just want folks to understand that. Let me uh, begin with you. Should the, the photos of the dead Osama bin Laden be released to the world so there's absolutely no dispute of, that he has met his maker? Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I want to start out by saying, and I think Mona and I would both agree on this, that Osama bin Laden and his ideology is an extremism that does not represent Islam and does not represent the majority of peace-loving Muslims. And with that being said, I think that this issue is a little bit complicated uh, because I think you have to weigh the pros and cons of releasing or not releasing. Um, hindsight is 2020, and we unfortunately don't have that benefit. Uh, so I have to say that I do agree with with our president, um, that I think that the, the negative outcome could actually outweigh uh, the positive. I think that uh, personally these are going to be gory and gruesome pictures which I have no desire to see, nor do I want my children or other people's children to, to see all over the internet. Um, what I'm really afraid of is these people and, and this, that sympathize with Obama, I mean, excuse me, with uh, bin Laden, to put up banners with pictures of his dead body and use that to rally more people around him. And I think that... Let me interrupt for a moment only so I can give Mona a chance to jump in on this. And let me argue okay. the other side for a moment. As you just heard, if you were able to hear the, the prior segment, there seems to be a growing movement in Pakistan, at least, that doubts that, in fact, bin Laden is dead. Would not these photos resolve that issue and put to rest with finality and make it clear that the leader of Al Qaeda is gone and finished? Mona, what do you think? Right. Um, I have to say that uh, that movement, I mean, the images that you showed in Pakistan represent a tiny minority of Pakistanis and Muslims because the majority of Muslims I know detested uh, uh, Osama bin Laden and what he represented and the way that he hijacked our religion and the way that he distorted everything that Islam represents and that we're proud of. I supported releasing the pictures because of the conspiracy theories. There are some conspiracists, of course, who will never be satisfied with any kind of proof. I have to add, though, that I, I, I don't know how much of his face is left to prove that it really his, it is him who is dead when the pictures are released. But you have to remember that many people across the world distrust everything the US administration says. And unless some kind of proof is presented, they will distrust it even more, especially because the story of the raid, it, the story of the raid itself is beginning to change already. So I would have supported it. And remember that we see gruesome pictures all the time. We're seeing terribly gruesome pictures of what the Assad regime is doing to Syrian revolutionaries. We're seeing horrendous pictures of what the Gaddafi regime is doing to Libyan revolutionaries. So I think people can make the choice for themselves, but I think because there's so much mistrust, the U.S. administration should have released the pictures. Hey, hey but what do you say to that? that? We need to do something demonstrative, something tangible, something that is akin to what people ordinarily see on a TV show to prove the case. You know, we're used to this, what I call TV-level proof now. I used to be a prosecutor, and we're used to having crimes solved with something you can look at, touch, feel, smell. Don't the folks in Pakistan who may be skeptics, they may be irrational, but don't they need to see something that is indisputable, such as a picture, such as a DNA sample? What do you, how do you respond to that? I, I think uh, Mona brings up many good points, and I'm, I'm actually conflicted over uh, this issue, but I don't think that a picture of a man who's had multiple head wounds is going to be um, undisputable uh, fact. I think that in the age of Photoshop and the age of, you know, airbrushing, um, that it's not going to quell any conspiracy theories. If anything, I think uh, that, uh, that it's just going to produce more, yet they're going to have images in their hand to, to use for their recruitment. Um, I think that 
that people are going to continue to believe what they believe. Some people think he's been dead for a long time and that they just chose now to, to say it. So I really think that the harm outweighs the, the, the good in this. And I think that our president knows the national security issues. And if he weighed it and he thinks that, that it could violate uh, and, and harm our national security, that we need to trust him. Mona Hibbis said something interesting a few moments ago. She said she thought the ideology of Osama bin Laden itself was dead. That ideology had run its course. It was no longer a persuasive argument to either the children or, or whatever generation may have listened to it over the past couple years. Do you agree with that? Do you think that his ideology is just finished and is now ready to be thrown in the scrap heap of history? Oh, absolutely. It has been for a while, Elliot. I think bin Laden's physical death uh, it came several years after his symbolic death. Uh, mostly because I think many Muslims around the world realize that his nihilistic violence has done nothing but kill thousands of Muslims around the world, make the lives of Muslims around the world, especially in this country, hell, with profiling and the war on terror. And between bin Laden and George Bush, Muslim lives in many countries have been turned into hell. And I also think that, you know, with the, the increasing uprisings and revolutions across the Middle East and North Africa, young people now, Muslim and non-Muslim, have a new model for change, that we can bring about change in the way that Egyptians brought about change peacefully. We don't need to even consider this nihilistic violence. I think for the majority of Muslims around the world, bin Laden represented uh, a terrible distortion of our religion and many people, many, much more than those you saw in those images in Pakistan, are relieved that he's dead. There's a big difference between celebrating and relief and most of us. And I have to add that uh, every single major uh, Islamic group in North America has released a statement saying we are relieved that bin Laden is dead. Good riddance, essentially. Hey, but let me pick up on okay, something Mona just said. Do, do you agree not only with that, the notion that the ideology is dead, but that what we are seeing in North Africa, in the Middle East, the revolutions that have swept that region, are they an affirmative response to bin Laden saying, no, we believe in freedom, tolerance, something other than the violence of bin Laden? Yes, I think that Mona is exactly right. I do believe that uh, Osama bin Laden and his ideology have been long marginalized in the Muslim and Arab world. And I think that here in the United States, we give him much more importance than over there. I think that it's ironic that his death comes at the time when uh, the Muslim countries are showing peaceful pro-democracy movements uh, coming about. And I think that I hope that the victims of 9-11 and all of us who were traumatized by what happened on 9-11 can finally get closure, closure this chapter in our life and move on to something new, something where we all join the human family, we build bridges, we learn to know each other, and we go based on tolerance and knowledge instead of fear and this black and white us versus them. Mona, we only have a brief time left. How did you respond to the, the, the joy that was expressed in the streets, the, the sort of flag waving, the cheers, the adulation mm -hmm. down at Ground Zero Sunday night? when it was announced that bin Laden was dead. Did that bother you in any sense? Did you think this was an, an affirmation of all that we believe in here? Well, you know, I went to Ground Zero soon after President Obama spoke because I wanted to pay respect to the thousands of people who lost their lives both at Ground Zero, in other places in the U.S., Shanksville, Pennsylvania, in D.C., but also to victims of the war on terror across the world. And I went there to say a prayer. I said the first chapter of the Quran there, Al-Fatiha, at, the, at Ground Zero for everyone who's lost their lives. But what I found there, Elliot, really dismayed me. It was basically a frat boy party that was a parody of Team America, the film which itself was a parody of George Bush's gung-ho American nationalism and exceptionalism. You know, people were, were cursing, using curse words before Osama bin Laden's name. I don't care about him. Good riddance to him. But, the, you know, it was like the Super Bowl. They were, they were chanting, ole, 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 at a place that is supposed to be hallowed ground. And where Muslims remember last year, Muslims were told, you cannot build the Islamic community center two blocks away because this is hallowed ground. And yet there, on hallowed ground with these young people, you know, chanting ole, ole, ole and using these awful words in a place where we should be paying respect. So I was really dismayed and America is better than this. It doesn't have to be this kind of triumphalism. We can say we're glad that Osama bin Laden is dead, but we should remember the thousands killed both here, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq and other countries that have suffered from both bin Laden and George Bush's war on terror, which I hope President Obama ends because it's time to close Guantanamo and it's time to stop committing these the, um, injustices that we should be better than because we must not descend Mona, to Mona. the levels that bin Laden took us can to. I, can I jump you, in here? You, Hiba, absolutely. I'm just going to say before you do so, Mona, you raised a host of issues there that maybe we can visit some other day from Guantanamo on down. But Hiba, respond if you would to how you reacted to what you saw at Ground Zero, either by being there or more, more likely, given that you're in Albuquerque, to watching it on TV. 
I have to say that when 9-11 happened, when I saw these scenes of Muslims celebrating in the street, it was so horrific to me and it was completely distasteful. And I think that, like Mona said, we are, Americans are better than this. We need to take a higher moral ground. We need to not celebrate death in this way and instead show people that we are humbled by these actions, that we are reflective and that we decide to take a different path than, than, than our enemies. Well, let, let, let me disagree with both of you just a little bit on this one. I hear the sentiment you're expect, expressing and you're both so articulate and persuasive. Having said that, this was a moment of joy that somebody who committed among the most vile acts in our history had finally paid a price and been captured and was no longer in a position to perpetrate more acts. And I think that was the outpouring of joy and satisfaction. It was not at death as much as it was that we who believe in tolerance, freedom, and that's justice true. had reigned that's supreme. And I think that's the way I view it. And that's why I sympathized and supported those not every word uttered, of course, but the sentiment down there at Ground Zero. Anyway, Hiba, Mona, thank you for a fascinating conversation. Pleasure thank to you. have you on the show. Thanks.